Hey guys, my name is Steve I'm with the Milson Perspective. Uh, this video is going to serve several uh, purposes. First one is it's my entry into Brent's PCI gear contest. Second of all, uh, the photos from this uh, footage is gonna, are going to be featured in some upcoming articles. One on my concept of a modular load carry system and another uh, that will kind of go in depth into uh, why I've chosen certain components in my carry system and, uh, and why. Uh, the last and possibly most important, this will probably and hopefully uh, return and get me some, some constructive criticism on my kit, what I can do better, and what I can improve for the future. So uh, for anyone who's not familiar with Brent's contest, uh, he basically has given us a notional mission and uh, expects us to uh, basically lay out all the gear uh, that we plan on, on using for that and explain why we will bring it. So uh, without any further ado, I'll allow Brent to uh, kind of explain that. Here's a clip from his announcement video. Orientation. We're currently located at Fob Devil Dog, which is located in the Alpha sector of northern Turkestan, approximately 55 miles southwest of the Turkestan and Sherpastan border. Our AO consists of temperate forest with hilly and rocky terrain. It is currently in the early fall season, so the leaves are just starting to change colors. The overwhelming majority of the environment, though, is still heavily vegetated and consists predominantly of greens and browns. The current weather forecast over the next few days is predicted to have highs in the 60s during the day with the lows in the 40s at night. There will be an 80% chance of rain on day two of the op. Situation. Over the last 48 hours, squad to platoon minus size elements of insurgents from the Durkistani Liberation Front, aka the DLF, who are believed to be led by their regional commander, Comrade Commissar Brzezinski, have been observed by reconnaissance teams to be increasing their presence in the northeastern edge of our unit's battle space. The DLF are believed to be attempting to open up a supply channels from their remote training camps in Sherpastan through the heavily wooded areas of this region in an effort to move small arms and equipment with their isolated insurgent cells in the southern part of the country. DLF fighters have been observed to be primarily armed with Soviet bloc small arms and equipment, such as AKs, RPDs, RPGs, and 82mm mortar systems. Additionally, they have been known to utilize technicals with either Dishkas or PK medium machine guns mounted on them. The ELF typically operate in squad size elements, but it is not uncommon for them to move in platoon size elements when they are planning large scale offensive operations. Mission On order, Alpha Company, 1st Platoon, 1st Squad, will conduct a three day combat patrol in the vicinity of grid 619 318 in order to deny the enemy freedom of movement through the AO. Additionally, your squad will conduct harassing engagements such as ambushes and raids on enemy movements in order to weaken and delay enemy resupply operations. Okay, so in addition to this, Warno Brent gave us a few uh, required pieces of kit that we needed to bring to support our squad's mission. Uh, these include a, a 100 rounds of 7.62 millimeter ammunition for a medium machine gun, six AR magazines, two pop flares, two frag grenades, and a uh, Claymore kit. So in addition to those, I uh, gave myself a few more stipulations. Um, I wanted to bring a squad level water filtration kit, something that could be used to, to refuel us all if we don't end up getting a, some sort of supply chain going. Uh, and then it, in addition to that, I require that all my kit is very modular. So in, the, in today's age of transitional warfare, uh, the ability to not stand out whether that is in a uh, attacking environment, if you're needing to blend with other units and look close to the same as them, or with a more civilian population, uh, my kit is designed to do that. So that was one of the major requirements that, that you'll see how that's kind of layered in with everything is, is kind of in groups or modules. Um, so because, because of all this, or what plays into all this, is that I'm typically out with uh, with one shepherd if I'm in the field. And uh, the big mentality with with us is is that of a light fighter. And the main focus there is that we're able to outmaneuver the enemy and close with them both strategically and tactically. So that means in the in the you know in the large scale and both on the battle and on the battlefield within an actual engagement as well. So we have to be lightweight in order to do that. Um, some would argue that that's what light infantry is. I would agree, but uh, definitions change over time so in keeping with that model 
uh, you'll see that I uh, do my best to limit the weight that I'm carrying at any one time uh, to the best of my ability. So um, now what I'm planning on doing is kind of starting at the, at the small level. I'm going to show you all the bits and bobs, all the little details, and uh, then you'll see kind of all the modules and layers come together. And at the end of this video, I'll put it all on and, and do my, my quick uh, pre-step off check and, and uh, then we'll be done. So uh, enjoy the ride. All right, we'll start off with my base layer. Uh, as you can see, I've chosen to go with OD camo. Uh, this was a very conscious decision. Uh, first of all, I usually am out in the field with one shepherd, and that is the one shepherd uniform. Uh, but that's not the main reason I went with it. Uh, Brent showed us a photo of the environment we'd be out in and explained that it's mostly mostly still green. Uh, the season's just starting to turn. And so I have seen Solid OD do some, some very interesting things, very effective things uh, for camouflage in that environment. And uh, if it was just a little bit later in the season, I'd go with multicam. But I'm sticking with straight OD right now. Um, reasons for not going with something like woodland is mainly for nighttime use. I've found that at least in Missouri, Oklahoma, uh, it's just a little bit too dark. And uh, OD seems to do a little bit better at night. So I'll start uh, kind of at my head and, and work my way down. So first up is my boonie. You'll see a little later that I am planning on wearing armor uh, during this op, uh, simply because of the mission type. However, I always like to bring a soft cover with me because I don't plan on wearing my helmet all the time. If we're around the patrol base uh, or if uh, mission parameters change and we end up shedding the armor and going more green side, then I still need something to cover my head. I've sniffed out plenty OPs and patrol bases because guys took off their covers and I had nice heads of hair popping around in there and so uh, I try to keep my head covered at all times. It's amazing what it does. I also got some cat eyes on the back. I've uh, been in quite a few uh, debates about whether or not to have cat eyes on the back of your head. I've never been told by someone that they located me because of the cat eyes, but I have been told many times that it uh, made it a lot easier to follow me in the middle of the night with having those there, especially for trail guys that don't have nods. On the inside, got a little piece of his panel, and that's just as a, a backup communication device. Uh, along with the boonie on my face, clear eye pro, uh, I'm usually out in the woods in, again, Missouri, Oklahoma area. We have a lot of cedar trees, and when they shed their leaves, they just leave big old horizontal sticks sticking out from the trunks. And uh, those will get you right in the eye. I've been stabbed in the face way too many times to not wear eye pro day and night. Uh, we also have some lovely spike trees that uh, also warrant it. So I'm going with a combat shirt, despite it dropping down into the 40s for this mission, um, with the the main purpose of area denial, I plan on moving quite a bit, and uh, I know that I create quite a bit of heat. When I'm loaded down and patrolling on, right, on kind of a continual basis, so I'm sticking with the combat shirt to try and keep that sweat down, and then I'll, uh, I'll pop the shell on at night or if I get cold. Uh, just a regular fabric patches, nothing IR reflective or anything like that because there wasn't anything in the off board said that we knew for sure the enemy did not have nods. So I don't want to be a massive beacon to the world there. This combat shirt does have some protection here on the elbows, uh, which I found to be pretty to appreciate. Uh, watch really nothing special there it's backlit so i have to be careful with that at night uh, but i the switch for that is recessed so it uh, has never really come on for me on accident uh, just some basic mechanics gloves camouflage on the back tan on the palms i like having kind of a uh, an offset 
color or an incorrect, not an obnoxious color like yellow or anything like that, but kind of a slightly different color on my palms. I feel that helps uh, with hand signal recognition, especially with the, uh, the kind of the standard signal for, hey, uh, trying to get somebody's attention being just showing your palm. And so I feel like having that slightly contrasting color helps get people's attention a little better. Pants are just regular ACU cut. They do have the soft knee pad inserts. Um, I have yet to upgrade to anything like a cry pant just because these haven't worn out and I don't hate them. So uh, if they become the squeaky wheel in my system, then they'll, that's where the money will go. But right now they work just fine. With that, I go with a, uh, a climbing rated belt. It's not a Cobra belt, but it's got a climbing rated buckle. Very fast to, to set up. This is actually my EDC belt. I work on roofs and in other slightly precarious positions enough that I want a tagline or something of that nature. So having a climbing rated belt is important. Also, we have plenty of little ravines and stuff in Missouri, Oklahoma area that uh, if we needed to get up and down them, it'd be a lot easier if we were doing tag lines. So that gives me a tying point on my base layer. Got my little survival kit here. This just goes in my cargo pocket. It's got some real basic items. Uh, this is not meant to be a, uh, a survive in the woods for a long time kit. This is just to get me to the nearest town. Again, Missouri, Oklahoma, I'm thinking about, I've got woods, I'm in the woods uh, with mixed fields. I've got numerous creeks running around, some of them are dry, some of them are wet. And you're really never more than, say, several miles from a small community. So I'm not really worried about having to trek for 30 miles in one direction to get, out, to get help. So uh, just the basics, tiny lighter. Uh, toilet paper goes with the lighter or wipe my butt. Got some trioxane in there. Uh, catadine tablets because iodine does not kill everything, that all the bugs that we have here in this area. I've got a squencher and that is uh, to help me rehydrate when I'm already dehydrated. Uh, it gives me some of those salts to help me keep going a little longer. Whistle for communication and also a signal meter for communication. So focus there is catching somebody's attention and getting out when necessary. Last up are my boots and my socks. Uh, I'm, I wear darn tough socks almost exclusively. This is their gym sock. And even though it's not technically padded, I wear it uh, hiking with load uh, just about all the time. They work extremely well and uh, I've been wearing them for I think about four years now and never worn one out and if I do they replace them free of charge. The boots are Solomon Quests, Gore-Tex. Uh, these ones are pretty worn. I'm getting ready to replace these but uh, I've been extremely happy with these in conjunction with the darn tough socks. Uh, no, not a single blister ever. Not even with you know typical infantry loads 75-ish maybe 100 pounds uh, hiking uh, varied terrain, so on and so forth. Um, no issues whatsoever. The only thing I don't like about them is they, they tend to wear out fairly quick, but I'm ridiculously hard on boots, so I can't really fault them there. Okay, now we'll move on to what I consider my EDC gear out on the FOB. So, obviously in civilian life, I'm not wearing this on a daily basis, but EDC, along with everything else, changes METC. It, it's all METC dependent. So if I'm living out of a fob in a contested area, something like that, this is my EDC. Starts off with a belt, just a regular inch and three quarter belt. It is climbing rated, it's got a cobra buckle. So this is a secondary uh, harness or quick climbing rated loop I can make either for myself or somebody else. It's got male Velcro on the back, so it Velcros to my pants belt, so I don't have to worry about it moving around. Got just a regular Safari Land holster for my secondary. It uh, I've wrapped uh, fabric on it, and then I use their quick attach system so that I can swap it out and uh, put it on other platforms. 
This also gives me a little bit of gap, which offsets it enough to clear both uh, armor and my uh, ruck waist belt. So moving on over, I've got just a standard kind of old school flap double mag pouch. Uh, I'm real big on flaps because of where this rides. This is pretty far forward, kind of on the front of my pelvis. And so it gets drugged through the mud when I'm crawling. That's why I haven't done something like a taco pouch or something open top to be a little faster to draw. That's, uh, so I'm currently researching what I can do to, up to upgrade that, but that's where it is right now. Fast mag for my rifle. Obviously that is for my AR. And then dump pouch for either spent magazines or extra equipment that I have to carry on the fly and it rolls up nicely. The main reason that I use this dump pouch is it hangs below, again, armor, pack belts, anything like that. It clears it all and I can reach down there and access it regardless of what's going on. Okay, so the, now we'll go over what I consider my patrol load. This is what I'm going to toss on when we're going on a patrol really of any length as we are in this notional scenario. Uh, first of all, uh, my rifle, 5.56 AR, nothing very, nothing terribly complicated. I consider this to be uh, nod ready. I don't have a uh, peck or anything like that on here, but if I was issued one from supply, I could easily toss it on and uh, switch over to the dual switch that Surefire offers and, and run it that way. Uh, also, same reason, uh, Fighting Night is why I've got the larger, kind of older school optic with the larger tube, lets in a little bit more light, uh, makes me more capable at night. Of course, sling, the regular options. Um, I'm left-handed, so everything is ambi. And uh, per the contest instructions, I'll be trying to clear an empty chamber and that is a real weapon. So, on this, uh, my, my typical load is seven magazines, one in the rifle, four in these front pockets of the chest rig, one behind my radio, and then one on my belt as shown below, or shown before. Uh, chest rig is a Mayflyer split front. The main reason for that is I love the fact that it can switch calibers. I can put AK mags or throwaway mags in here. It can also swap to uh, just like a utility pouch. The magazine inserts come out, swaps to utility pouch, so it's very multifunctional. I can use it for more things than just uh, milsim type patrolling. Uh, also, it, as you can see, detaches from everything, uh, so I can run it with this slick set of suspenders. Again, you'll notice when I'm running it with just the suspenders, I've got cat eyes on the back down low so that I can be tracked by my guys, but not obnoxiously obvious to the enemy. Uh, I'll be tossing this in the bottom of my ruck uh, on this mission. Again, uh, coming back to that modularity aspect of my gear. If for some reason we end up ditching armor and going lighter weight, then I'm ready for that. Also, this enables me to wear the chest rig without plates underneath my ruck. That's the main reason for it or if uh, for some reason we're getting in vehicles. So now I'll go ahead and uh, pause the video, break everything out, and we can go over this item by item. All right, inside the chest rig, uh, carry my patrol load. Um, in this radio pouch that sits on my right side, I've got my bad thing with extended AA battery. I uh, like going with AA battery packs because I can just carry AA's to fuel multiple things in the field. Got my extension push talk button from the headset. In this small pouch on the side of it is a buzz saw. It's just a uh, chem light with paracord wrap around it. I can swing this over my head to signal a craft or in front of me to signal vehicles. In this little pouch right here I've got some snacks and spare batteries, double A's and triple A's because I run both of those on my equipment. Of course the six magazines uh, here in this front pouch is my compass. It's obviously dummy quartered. It's majorly important. Never lose that. And then paste beads are hanging. A lot of times I'll just tuck these behind my chest rig and they hang behind it unless I'm actually using them. In this little pistol mag pouch 
I keep my multi-tool uh, nice and handy. We have a lot of ticks out here in the Midwest and it's pretty common for me to end up killing a few of them with the pliers on that so I like to keep them handy. Also just for any quick repairs so on and so forth. Pencil uh, just tucks in here in the side and uh, I'll also keep a pencil, maybe a sharpie or something like that in the pocket of my uniform. This larger pocket up front, I've got my cam cream. Camouflage is uh, something you never stop doing. You, you know, initially put it on and then uh, you're continually improving it as you move through your AO. And this one's got a mirror, so that's why I've got it. Waterproof notebook, pairs with the pencil, pretty self-explanatory. Um, use a lot for keeping track of SOI or, or various other things. And I keep a page protector in here to put my map in. Uh, over here is a chem light holder. So this enables me to rotate it either so that this hole isn't showing or that this slot is showing or nothing's showing. And that enables me to give off a small amount of light for signaling uh, without uh, giving it away when I don't want to. Uh, issue that I've had in the past with chem lights is once you crack them at night, say you're, you're doing your your near recognition nonsense, you accomplish it, yay everybody's together, you stuff it in your pocket, well I can still see that not or that uh, chem light through my nods through your pocket. So I keep this to store this in once it's been popped uh, so I don't just have to bury it or something like that. So in this large pocket over here is my IFAC. It, the Mayflower Chester comes with this little insert which is sized for this pouch, which is just about perfect. So inside there, I've got a pressure dressing, pill pack, duct tape, uh, compressed gums, SWAT T tourniquet, uh, Celex, which is basically a quick clutch, an NPA, and gloves. And then I have a, a small tourniquet pouch on the side, which holds my cat and my trauma shears. So left side for me is my my uh, medical and this little tab hangs out of the pouch along with this tab signifying to my buddies that that's where it's at. Okay let's talk armor. So obviously armor is going to be mission dependent. Uh, this mission being area denial tells me that we're going to be fairly aggressive in our posturing. Um, we're looking to push the enemy out of specific areas in the AO. And so I anticipate that if we make soft contact, we'll, we'll move to contact. If we make hard contact, we'll push it. Of course, if that's the, the choice that's made. So I'm anticipating that um, with this equipment. Now, unfortunately, this is adding, what you're looking at right here is 26 pounds added to my kit. So this is not a decision I take lightly, uh, but I also don't want to die. So, we're going to go ahead and suck it up and carry this. Plate carrier is a Mayflower APC. Uh, the main feature here is the swift clip system. allows me to put my patrol load right on the front. And uh, AR-500 plates inside make up most of the weight. And armor is not something I, I need to carry very often. And so unfortunately it hasn't been that squeaky gear in the kit yet. And it hasn't been upgraded very much. Helmet is a ballistic CVC shell with some Opscore op goodies. Obviously, a helmet cover to break up the shape. I, uh, I love it when other people, uh, opposing training team members, wear a helmet without a cover or without any uh, scram or anything on it. It's ridiculously easy to find amongst the woods. So, scram to break up the color, or I'm sorry, the shape. Opscore cameras for a couple of reasons, mainly. That is for me to review my own uh, performance under stress. So one of the main things in, in improving is self-diagnosing of issues. So that's my main tool in that. Secondly, um, if, we may, if we raid or ambush or something along those lines, uh, we accomplish our initial objectives. We're going back through and searching for reconnaissance information. Uh, I don't really have time to transfer notes or uh, there might be things that I can't just shove in my pocket and so I flip this camera on I just look at it and then I can pause the video later and read 
whatever their SOI was or so on and so forth. Um, in addition, I've got my MS2000 strobe on the back. So the main reason for that is, of course, friendly uh, designation for either aircraft or vehicles we may be operating with. Obviously, this kit is uh, under the guise of a light fighter mentality, but that doesn't mean that we might not have other friendly forces in the area. Uh, there wasn't any information on that given in our warno. So in anticipation that there are hopefully some air and vehicle assets in the area, uh, this will hopefully help me uh, be seen as a friendly. Also, this gives me another communication signaling capability with the blue lens. Um, obviously, uh, nod mount on the front for that. And then uh, contacts go inside the helmet band of the helmet. Um, because again, the I'm anticipating contact with this kit. This gives me both hearing protection and also I can integrate my comms into it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over my hydration setup. Uh, first we have the source bladder. I believe this was issued with the Philby system, the Marine Corps. Um, I chose it because it is slick. It forces me to cut down uh, those extra pieces of kit that I might rather carry if I had some, some extra space. And it uh, goes right back into that modularity and light fire mentality. So I also like it because of these clips on the shoulder straps enable me to clip it directly into my plate, or I'm sorry, my chest rig. Um, that limits or, or lessens the amount of shoulder straps, straps in my shoulder pocket where my rifle is going to be put. Uh, and just kind of helps uh, simplify everything. So it's also got these little straps up at the top. I can hook it to my plate carrier. And then, of course, I can just sling it like a regular backpack if I need to put it on quickly. I've upgraded it with the uh, Camelback Hydrolink system, and you'll see kind of how that plays in here in a moment. And then, of course, it's got cat eyes on it. So next up is my Sawyer Mini water filter. Uh, put the uh, Hydrolink system on that as well. What this allows is uh, several things. First of all, it acts like a straw, so I can drink directly out of a uh, static water source. Uh, but most importantly, I can use them use it in conjunction with both of my hydration bladders. This is another three liter bladder. Both of these are three liter bladders. This is a Camelback. It rides in my ruck, and of course, uh, I'll fill it up at the beginning of a mission. And this is what I'll be drinking off of while I'm carrying my ruck, so that I can keep this full for when eventually we drop rucks and just go with our patrol loads. The nice thing about this system is that. Once this gets empty, I can go fill it up at a stream or, or whatever. And I don't have to sit there and filter. I just put the water in there and I'm gone. This limits my time exposed at a water source. Uh, water sources are pretty good places to kind of keep an eye out on for enemy activity. So I want to minimize uh, the opportunities for the enemy to find us. Where the filter comes in, is I can hang this bag up in camp and then hook the filter in line between the two, filtering uh, dirty water from here through the filter directly into this without having to pull them all out and mess with them, just go straight through the tubes. Um, and then additionally, uh, so that, that either works at camp or I can put both in my ruck with this one being a little bit higher or under some compression and it'll filter on the move. Additionally, if I get really low and I'm completely out of water, I can just click this in line and put dirty water in my Camelback and drink directly through the filter. So multiple ways that can be used and uh, this filters fairly rapidly so I can I can pretty much resupply our squad in a, in a decent amount of time. So the last piece of kit here is my stainless steel water bottle and cooking cup. I, uh, I carry these for, for a couple of reasons. So the, one of the main safety concerns with using hydration bladders is that they can burst you know for a number of reasons whether it's temperature or environmental accidents so uh, they get punctured something goes wrong so this is my emergency water storage um, it always stays full while we're while we're on the move and uh, if these magically disappear then i still have this much water to go on 
Additionally, it is ridiculously easier to cook and be around camp or around a fob using a, a cup and a, a bottle than it is just drinking out of a tube. Also, this allows me to mix my, my drink mix into the bottle and at the same time I can boil water to heat my MRE or uh, make some sort of squad rat stew or soup in the cup and I can sit and I can deal with these and and through that whole period of time while I'm eating and drinking these are still these remain topped off ready to go if we have to go if we have to jump up and leave at a moment's notice okay so since we've started into what's going in the ruck with the hydration gear with the, the black bladder and the filter both being in there we'll kind of continue down that vein uh, foods the next thing on the list I've got four MREs that I have modified and supplemented a little bit uh, in my brain with a three-day mission we're gonna eat breakfast in the morning lunch and dinners in the field breakfast lunch and dinner in the field the next day and the last day breakfast and lunch in the field and then dinner back at the fob so obviously some assumptions made there and uh, if that was not gonna be the case we're doing offset hours I adjust the the portioning accordingly again these have been supplemented a little bit and they're still smaller than the normal MREs I like to throw in a little bit extra snacks uh, to get me through the day also you already saw I've got some snacks in my chest rig and then I've got emergency backup food in my personal care kit so speaking of personal care I've got my boo-boo kit here it's got duct tape around it and then uh, this is just your 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 very basic morale uh, boosting kit so those little things like ticks and blisters and cuts that's what this is for so I've got tweezers super glue some meds little bits of gauze um, uh, some band-aids and, and things like that and they're all in uh, lock sacks to prevent them from from getting wet moving on from there this is my nod pouch I can move this either uh, to a you know if it, in another situation if we're doing an assault pack I'm not doing that here on this particular mission it'll go in there uh, or I can just clip it to my belt because it's a regular molly pouch um, I've modified it by putting some foam inside right now I just have my mount in here but typically the mount would be shoved over on the side and the knob would ride down the middle I don't actually own knobs but everything in my kit is set up to run with knobs and that's because like I said I've, I run primarily with one shepherd and I can draw knobs from supply so I'm ready to go with it and uh, again making some assumptions uh, just like Brent said he's only given the specific amount of information out we'll have to go take it from there so that's what I'm doing okay so here is my personal care kit just kind of laid out the pouch itself is a ripaway EMT pouch or medical pouch and uh, I like it a because it's got velcro on the back I can stick it to the inside of my ruck also it's just well organized and it serves a good way to, to kind of keep all these these smaller items together and uh, that way I can just pull it out find what I need and, and I'm not digging through a bunch of tiny things out of my ruck so I'll kind of go through these fairly quickly first of all is my emergency ration got a full entree there and and of course this is eaten last if I run out got a trash bag it's just one of those thousand use items uh, waterproof things carry stuff all kinds of things on the communication end of things, I've got a battery-powered chem light. I've got tiny chem lights that uh, usually use for setting, uh, making breadcrumb trails. And then I've got two regular size chem lights that are there to replace uh, the chem lights on my my chest rig if I use those. I have a backup pencil because uh, if I run out or if I lose all my pencils, I'm kind of screwed. I've got paracord for my tarp uh, to make a shelter my stove MSR pocket rocket and fuel got backup water filtration tablets uh, a double-a and triple-a batteries again those are the two batteries that I pretty much consolidate most of my stuff to uh, got a, a very dim right back headlamp this is my headlamp of choice because it is the dimmest headlamp I could find that's still ridiculously simple waterproof etc and easy on the budget so and this will move to my chest rig at night 
have lens cloth because there's lots of lenses on what I'm carrying from my optic on my rifle to nods, everything else. Got a scrub pad um, that is for cleaning out, but it's for doing dishes. So just a little bit of water and that scrub pad and I can get everything nice and clean. Don't want any bacteria growing on my stuff, especially on a longer mission. Um, got my fire kit, so matches, lighter, trioxane, and toilet paper if I've got to use it. Uh, pretty pretty fail safe, pretty foolproof. Uh, just got an extra D-ring in here because it's lightweight and I can use it to repair things. Also on the repairing end of things, uh, credit card with duct tape on it over to the actual personal care items I've got some wipes small packet of them and good for about one to two uh, essentials showers if uh, you're tracking that uh, deodorant uh, because smelly people are easy people to find uh, have two little bags of uh, gold bond powder because uh, get funky out there, and then uh, just a nail file uh, in case I get a hangnail or something like that. Doesn't start ripping and hurting and bothering me. That's just a, a morale item. Okay, so now I'm going to touch on the squad gear we're required to carry for this notional mission. Um, I've done my best to kind of simulate both the size and the weight of it with uh, just stuff I have. So first up is an airsoft M60 box mag. Uh, this is roughly the size of a 100 round 7.62 bandolier, uh, obviously lighter. Um, got my Claymore bag, I just put a couple bricks in here to simulate the weight of Claymore and the firing system. Also, I'm hoping this is going to offset the unrealistic weight of the box mag just a little bit. I've got six uh, Airsoft Gas M4 mags. These are all weighted to be about the weight of a loaded real AR mag, so I'm leaving those there. You got two training grenades, obviously taped because yay safety. And then a couple pop flares. And this all is right in the top of the ruck so that it's easily accessible. And all the, I'll show that in a little more detail later. Okay, so now we'll go over the last few items in my ruck and then we'll go over the pack itself. So first up is my open hard shell. Uh, this is my primary rain gear along with the pants that are inside the stuff sack. This rides in the very top little uh, pouch pocket on my ruck so I can quickly get at it and uh, I've, I've decided to go with hard shells rather than soft shells for this mission primarily because of the way that it rains in my AO. So Oklahoma, Missouri area, storms move in, lots of wind, they dump and then they're gone. So lots of rain, short period of time, typically overwhelms a lot of what a soft shell can can give you, uh, that, the protection that it can give you. And so I'm not anticipating having to wear these all day, aka I'm not really I'm not as concerned about heat and moisture getting out. I'm more concerned about protecting myself from cold water coming in, hence hard shell versus soft shell. So. Uh, that said, moving on, I have just a regular uh, U.S. Army issue thermarest, nothing fancy, nothing special there. Have a Sea Summit dry compression sack. Uh, this is a little bit thinner material than like the Marine Corps issued compressible dry bags, um, and I feel like this is a, a good place that I can save weight and bulk because this is going to be riding inside my ruck, not outside getting torn up. If it was out getting destroyed outside my ruck or I was using it, using it as a standalone bag, I would probably want something a little thicker, more heavy duty fabric, but it's not. So there you go. All right. So first up, sleeping socks. Um, I always carry a spare set of socks and they're usually significantly thicker or heavier than the primary socks that I'm wearing. The reason for that is it goes cold at night, so that's where I wear what I wear, excuse me, when I sleep. Uh, obviously, if my feet get wet, I can switch to those. Um, and then this gives me an opportunity to, at night or whenever my downtime is, I wear those and allow my primary socks to dry out. Um, 
and get a little less funky. So additionally I've got my, this is my tarp, it's a snug pack tarp, I'm not sure, I don't remember the exact model name of it, but uh, it, uh, so this is, that's my shelter for, for this uh, event. And I can either string that up as, you know, any number of, of shelters, or I can pair with another guy and use mine or theirs as a ground sheet and then a, a shelter on top. So multifunctional, that's why I use a tent or a shelter rather than a tent. I've got kind of a, a thin Under Armour type uh, hat, and that's uh, it's a helmet liner, and that's what I use whenever I'm bringing my helmet out on the mission instead of a beanie. I also have one of these little sniper veils. I like this because I can use it as a scarf if it gets cold, going back to the concept of multi-use items, modularity, uh, possible changing mission, and mission sets and parameters. Uh, this fits well. I can use it as a scarf to keep me warm. Uh, I can throw it over me if we start getting a little more green side, a little more recon oriented. So then I've got my PCU pants, hard shell, rain coverage. Um, we see a big storm rolling in. As good infantrymen, we've learned a little bit about weather and how to predict it, of course. And so if we see something incoming, I'm going to pull those out and uh, stave off that hypothermia. It just a little bit better. So the next thing out of the bag is my snowpack jungle bag. So it's going to get down into the 40s on this notional mission, which is right about the the, the edge of what snowpack says this this bag can take. And uh, I'm okay with that for a couple of reasons. First of all, I can wear my jacket, my pant, my right pants inside. Um, I'm not really, this is a poly bag, I'm not really worried about it being super wet. It, this is basically a whoopee with a zipper on it, as far as I'm concerned. So for those who don't know, it can zip completely open. I can use it just like a whoopee around the camp, around the patrol base. Also, it's got an integrated bug hood in case we get it not down next to some nice nasty water. Not really worried about that at this temperature temperature range, uh, but it's totally totally possible. The other main reason I'm not concerned about the, being kind of on the edge of that bag's capabilities, I've got my MSS Cortex Bivy with it, and this will pair, of course, with the tarp to keep me nice and dry. So. Uh, between those and the clothes I can wear uh, inside my bag, I anticipate that I'll be more than comfortable, possibly even cozy at night. Okay, so my pack for this mission is a Kelty Red Ring 50T. Um, basically, they've upgraded the Red Wing 50 with some more uh, military-esque features. Uh, they're giving it some a little bit stronger zippers, and then giving it a slightly more adjustable harness system uh, with some additional straps that allow it to expand over armor. So, dive right in. We've already seen all the components, so I'm not really going to go over them very quickly. This is mostly just to uh, kind of get an idea of the pack and, and see everything in it. So, in this top little compartment is my uh, Gore-Tex, my hard shell. Back here, I have my control ladder and my two pop flares. Uh, a lot of the time, if we're going out at night, I will shove those pop flares in my hydration bladder. That's why they're together. Uh, this is kind of a, an abnormal place for me to put water because it's so far away from my back. But the suspension of this pack is so exceptional. I really haven't noticed the issue. I've been carrying it around and testing it out making sure that this actually works rather than just putting it all in the pack and saying, yeah, go us. So, um, while it's abnormal, it, does, it is working for me. And the main purpose of this is that I can pull it out and just slip it on real fast if we need to go drop rucks and, and go on the patrol. So, we have compression straps on all four sides. I've got them unclipped so I can show the pack off a little bit two uh, fairly good size pouches on the side. I've got my boonie and my uh, water bottle with canteen cup and then also my uh, filters in here as well. So this is kind of my water side and this just happened to be a good place to put the boonie. It also kind of helps all that stuff stay under a little bit of compression 
so it's not making any noise. Other side, also a couple more quick access items. My next MRE, so this is a dinner MRE, assuming we're stepping off in the morning. Um, so I'll break into this about lunch, get some snacks out, and then put the rest of the way, put the rest of it away for dinner. I also have my fuel for my stove, so that that's all easily accessible. If uh, the weather takes a turn for the worse, we need to make some hot drinks on, on the fly. Uh, both of these side pockets are, are tube sewn, which means there's a complete pass through here. So I can run long items up and down and use these little pouches on the bottom uh, to secure whatever the bottom of it is. Typically I use these for trash uh, to kind of help myself give myself a quick place to police all that so I'm not leaving any sort of trail. So the rest of the kit is all in the main pouch. And one of the main things I like about this pack is I can use it a top loader or a panel loader. So top load, you can you know just get that stuff on the top. Panel load, you get the whole thing. So obviously since we're doing the whole pack, I'm going to completely open it up, which is going to undo some of my organization. So you see here, we have our six mags on top. Unfortunately, I don't have a bandolier, so they're just hanging out right there. Got my frags, my 762, my Claymore kit folded over here, my nods. I've got my other three MREs, my personal care kit, and then down in here is my compression sack with my uh, spare clothes and my entire sleep system. And of course, I've got my sleeping pad right here. So that rolls, that lines everything out. That's all my stuff. And now we'll go ahead and put it all on and see what it looks like to step off. All right, we're all kitted up, ready to go. Sun's setting, it's my favorite time to step off. I love it, getting into those night hours, get some good movement in before anybody's up and around. I'm gonna do my quick 360 and it's required by this video contest. Now I wanted to touch on one more thing before I kick it off. Um, I like to run my packs a little bit big. You know, you'll see this is a 50 liter pack, a little bit bigger than a medium mouse, and that's what it's replacing for me. And the reason for that is that I want to give the enemy as little information about me as possible. So I want all my stuff inside of it. You know, so there's nothing hanging off, there's nothing giving them an idea of what kind of team I am, what my mission might be. And uh, so from being on the other side, being the guy watching others, being like, oh cool, appreciate you putting that rocket launcher on the outside of your pack. Appreciate you, all those kinds of things. Thanks for, uh, thanks for making that marksman rifle easy to see. Those kind of things, it all, uh, it all aids in their intelligence gathering. So I'd, I'd try to keep that to a minimum. Um, I just wanna say thank you to Brent for putting this contest together it's a little fire under my butt to get out and do this I've been needing to put some content out on my kit anyways and uh, and we'll just kick it off uh, appreciate it thank you for all who watch like subscribe if you want to see more like this uh, hit up our website themilsonperspective.com if you want to see we've got over almost 200 articles good information if you want to read them if you want more hit them up we watch the we watch the views very closely to see what our reader base wants and that's what we produce so thanks again appreciate the opportunity and had a lot of fun putting this together and uh, let's step off